evening. Welcome to Inside Asia. We are very lucky today to have an exclusive talk with His Excellency Curtis Chin, the former U.S. Ambassador to ADB. Let's talk about ADB tonight. So uh, thank you again to, to uh, having us a, a very a good opportunity to talk with you about your work and your experience that may contribute to us in uh, Asia because we are inside Asia now. Uh, could you please describe uh, a little bit about your current work here in Thailand? Well, first, it's great, again, as always, to be talking with you and sharing some of my perspectives. Um, right now, I've moved back to Thailand. I was a kid in Thailand many, many years ago. Uh, but I moved back to Thailand as a senior fellow and executive in residence at the Asian Institute of Technology. You know, many in Thailand will know of AIT. It was founded some 50 years ago with strong U.S. support to really help raise up, you know, graduate level education, particularly in the technological technology area uh, in Asia. So I'm based there uh, at the AIT Corporate Social Responsibility Center for Asia, really sharing a business perspective on some things, but also bringing with it, or bringing with me to campus, uh, my views as the former U.S. Ambassador on the Asian Development Bank, where I was involved for not quite four years as the U.S. Board Representative on you know, the Board of Directors of the Asian yes, Development yes, Bank. Yes, so, uh, from your experience, ADB, you know, from, from my perspective, ADB seems to have a lot of projects that try to raise up the quality of life of the people. They compose at least, of, from this list, five projects at least uh, to, to cooperate with national level of, of the government in, let's say, Asia, not just only ASEAN. Um, why you are promoting modern economics? I mean, when, when you were at the board of uh, administration mm -hmm. there, the representative of the U.S. ambassador, do you see any um, uh, developments from the past that mm -hmm. ADB, you know, can, can, can be better? I mean, not just better. How is the progress of the ADB from your uh, sure. perspective? You know, again, I'm, I'm no longer on the board of yes. the Asian Development Bank, uh, ADB. Um, and it's not just five projects. They, they finance programs and projects, you know, throughout the region. The ADB has defined Asia very broadly. Uh, it goes all the way west to the Caucasus, so countries like Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and all the way east to the Pacific Island nations, Fiji, uh, Palau. Uh, they're all parts of the Asia-Pacific region, according to the Asian Development Bank's definition of Asia. Now, you asked a little bit about, you know, what is the ADB promoting? You know, what were my own views or my own government's views? on the board of the ADB. The ADB has been around for some 45, 46 years, you know, and I think throughout that time, it's really played a great role in helping countries, particularly the poorest countries of Asia, move forward. You know, on the board of the ADB are some, you know, uh, 12 board directors. You know, uh, the ADB, you know, many people will know the World Bank, uh, but the ADB is kind of like an Asian version somewhat of the World Bank. It's owned by governments, including Thailand, and lends to governments. So, you know, you and I cannot go to the ADB and get a loan, uh, but perhaps, you know, uh, the Thai government uh, may decide to go to the ADB to get a loan. You know, the reality is that after the Asian financial crisis uh, in the uh, uh, mid to late 90s, Thailand and other countries in Asia uh, stopped borrowing from the ADB. You know, some borrowed, some didn't. And Thailand came back to the ADB really in the last couple years to begin borrowing again uh, from the ADB uh, for projects that might include helping, you know, uh, promote capital development here or a local, almost like a local bond market so you can help raise money locally for domestic infrastructure projects. But I think on my old role on the board, uh, you know, we would want to push the ADB and governments in the region to think about if you choose to borrow from the ADB, you know, our hope is that really it goes to help the poorest people in your countries. But, you know, the ADB is not here to replace private capital. But indeed, uh, no matter how much money uh, a country might get from the ADB, you know, it'll, it'll be small compared to the role that private business, that private banks can do in finance. Yes. But to get there, countries have to change some of their own rules and laws to encourage business innovation, to encourage inflows of capital. And so certainly in my own life, uh, in my own role on the board of the Asian Development Bank, we're very complementary of some of the things that the ADB uh, does and did, but it doesn't mean that it can't be even stronger and better to almost you know, change as Asia itself is changing. So uh, the model that, that ADB tried to promote is some kind of uh, economic new model. 
uh, when we talk about ASEAN or Asia, we, we are based on agricultural products. What would it fit or very fit to the policy of ADB or, or your, your experience mm -hmm. that, that, that you work with? Are there any strength or weakness that this uh, kind of economic model uh, that help you know, to, to this kind of uh, agricultural base, uh, uh, how to say, mode of production? Mm. You know, I certainly cannot and would not want to speak on behalf of the <laughs> ADB. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm really not sure what you mean by a new economic model, but I can yeah. tell you that one of the things that from a United States perspective when I represented the U.S. was to encourage the ADB to really encourage the private sector. Mm -hmm. You know, I think this is one of the lessons of development. Even if we look at China, you know, China to its great credit has really lifted really millions out of poverty. But it wasn't because of a World Bank loan or an ADB grant. It was because China slowly has allowed its own people to innovate, that, that businesses can be created. China certainly has a long way to go with the terms of fighting corruption, uh, improving the rule of law, but the secret wasn't some new model. It was just learning from what works, which is allowing people and businesses to innovate and push things forward on their own. What, what I meant was uh, kind of capitalism and you know, kind of, uh, is it fit to agricultural you know, mode of production in ASEAN? Yeah. You know, again, I, we'll have to look at each individual country, but yes, you know, sir. the United States is one of the biggest exporters of agricultural products in the world. Oh, yes, sir. And so I don't think there's anything wrong or there's no conflict be between promoting free markets, yes. capitalism, and being a great agricultural uh, producer. Thailand is the number one rice producer in the world, <laughs> yes. number one rice exporter, I mean. Uh, and certainly Thailand is also very capitalistic, right? That people are slowly moving forward. So agriculture in no means means that you cannot be thinking about uh, rule of law, regulated markets to the degree that regulation just kind of ensures a level playing field between countries. So this is a very good point because, you know, most of the people try to, you know, uh, kind of anti-capitalism, but when, when you come with this tool, uh, some people might say to help this, I would say, poor country uh, in this region because ADB is some kind of, you know, beyond the government and this is the outsource, I mean, out-resource, the people from outside to help uh, these countries. Yeah? You may give grant, you may give loan, you may give money. Would it be sustainable enough you know, to help these people by just giving money or, or you have other kind of policies that to make it more sustainable for, for this region? You know, again, I cannot speak on what the ADB is doing or not doing, but I certainly know during my time on the board of directors of the ADB, one thing that we, you know, representing the United States, wanted the ADB to do is think about sustainability of its efforts. That the reality is that no country will take a loan or a grant that it doesn't want. Right? Countries decide they own their own borrowing and their own grants. Yes. So, you know, it's not like ADB is forcing anything on any one country, but certainly from my own personal viewpoint, as well as during the time I represented the U.S., the ADB can certainly be doing a lot more to encourage private business, to encourage governments fighting corruption. I think that's really the, the, the truth about, you know, how we'll move countries forward. It's not loans or grants. It's putting in place the systems for the people of countries to succeed on their own to have more disciplines, to have more, you know, kind of the way, you know, to live together with this world, right? So, um, for this break, could you please uh, describe again that you are not the, the, the spokesman of the ADB, but uh, from your perspective, what is the advantage of DB that can help, you know, people in ASEAN? Well, again, as you noted, I'm not with the ADB, and uh, yes, I'm no sir. longer yes, with the sir. U.S. Yes, government. Yes, but I think the ADB pro can provide incremental help that to the degree that they can learn from some of the things that ADB has experienced uh, or been involved with in the past. That's yes. great. But at the end of the day, governments themselves know what they need to do to move their countries forward. Yes. It's not about money from the ADB or the World Bank. It's governments themselves getting a handle on bureaucracy, regulation, interventions by the government, really corruption and cronyism. Governments need to fight that first and foremost so that people have confidence that if they invest in a business that the government won't take their money. Wow. Uh, that really uh, governments know what they need to do. And my hope is that the ADB, the World Bank, can help reinforce those efforts. But governments themselves need to take control of their own futures so that you know, they can move forward. And at the end of the day, 
Governments need to respond to their own citizens, to their own people. You know, I, I think uh, one time I had met you, we talked about ASEAN. But under the ASEAN Charter, it encourages freedom. It encourages democracy. And my hope is that as the 10 nations of ASEAN move forward, they will take to heart that language in its own charter about what they can do to strengthen their own region uh, individually and overall. You see what uh, our Excellency uh, talked about the very optimistic view of ADB for us. And coming up next, we will continue our talk again with His Excellency Curtis Chin. Stay tuned.